What's up guys and welcome to this video. This video is a full review of this, which is the Philips 27 inch 1080p 144Hz G-Sync monitor. You can find the full model number below, but like a lot of other products, it has a very long model name that it will just take me too long to remember. So this is a monitor that is aimed solely at gamers and gamers that have an Nvidia graphics card. It uses G-Sync, which is of course their variable refresh rate technology to give you the smoothest and stutter-free experience you can get on a gaming monitor. But is this one any good and should you buy it? So then, this is a G-Sync monitor. What that means is that it's really good for gaming because the refresh rate of the monitor will match your FPS in game. Now, this means that you don't get any stutter or you don't get any tearing that's normally associated with enabling or disabling V-Sync, which means that you get a really smooth experience. But if you wanna know more about G-Sync, how it works and how well it works, I will discuss a little bit more about that later on in the video, but for a full guide that tells you everything you need to know, just click here and then you will be taken to a video that will show you all about G-Sync and how it works. So before we get on to the gaming experience and the gaming experience with G-Sync, what is this monitor actually like? Well, as soon as you get out of the box, it's pretty easy to assemble. You literally just need to attach the stand to its base and then the whole base and stand to the monitor itself. This is very simple and if you want to use a Visa mount, then it has Visa mount compatibility. So if you want to use a third party stand, you can do that. The stand itself is quite a nice finish, it's black. It isn't the most expensive materials I've ever seen on a monitor, but that said, it does a very good job and it does a better job than that of the last Philips monitor I have used. It does shake a little bit, the whole unit, if you, say, press down on your desk or if you actually touch the monitor itself, but this has never been an issue and it's a, sort of a fair build quality for the price you're paying. The whole thing does look very good though, it's got the more gamer sort of centric look about it. It's got a nice non-reflective grille, unlike the last Philips one that I've used where the Philips logo is. But the stand itself is pretty good because it's got cable management holes like you'd expect. But then it's also got full tilt, swivel, and pretty much everything else you'd want from it. You can position it how you want, and regardless of whether you've got one, two, three, or however monitors you've got, it should be pretty easy for you to actually get this in the orientation you want. That includes full 90 degrees if you want to actually use it in portrait mode rather than in landscape mode. Now connections wise, this does use DisplayPort and that is all you get. Because it's a G-Sync monitor, they pretty much have universally decided that you don't need anything else, just one DisplayPort, which means if you wanna hook up something like a games console via HDMI, you won't be able to do that. And that is kind of a fair decision, but maybe it keeps costs down a little bit. And the only thing you should really be using with this monitor if you're using a PC at least, is DisplayPort, but it is a shame that we don't have that option to use something else as well if we want. Now this does use a power brick, if that makes any difference to you at all, I don't see why it would, but it is of course worth mentioning. And then it's also got a USB 3, 4 port hub on the side of the monitor as well. So that's the monitor from a hardware point of view, but what is it actually like to use? We'll start with image quality. And this is a TN panel. Now immediately that does send warning signs, but this is a gaming monitor, which most gaming monitors these days, other than a very few really expensive ones that are coming up, use TN panels, and that is because they are quicker and more responsive than IPS or VA panels. Now the usual trade-off with this is that the image quality is not really as good as an IPS or a VA panel. The blacks probably won't be as good, and the colors probably won't be so good. And this monitor is no exception to that. The color is, pretty much very unexceptional. It's absolutely fine for gaming, it's fine for everything, but if you wanna be doing any serious image work, then this is not the monitor for you. This is a gaming monitor aimed at gamers, so it has made some cutbacks at the expense of color reproduction. That said, the viewing angles are pretty much what you expect from a TN panel. If you tilt it from left to right, actually they're not that bad, and I don't think anyone looking from the side would have too much of an issue. Obviously it won't be as good as an IPS panel or a VA panel, but the vertical um, actual viewing angles aren't quite as good. And if you are using this in portrait mode, to be honest, you're gonna run into some issues and I personally wouldn't do it. But again, that is just a standard trait of TN panels. 
Now what this monitor lacks in color reproduction, it does easily make up for it with responsiveness. This is probably the most responsive monitor I've ever used. It's 144 hertz, which means everything is super smooth. For anyone wondering, I can't really tell a difference between 120 and 144, but I would recommend leaving it at 120 hertz in the desktop, just because if you're watching 30 frames a second video, it's gonna fit nicely because 120 is divisible by 30, and 144 isn't. So it means that that experience is gonna be that little bit smoother for you. Enabling the refresh rate is really simple. Just do that in your NVIDIA control panel and then away you go. Uh, if you want to use the ultra low motion blur setting, then, then you need to be in 120 hertz, 100 hertz, or 85 hertz, I believe. And um, this does come at the expense of brightness. It's significantly dimmer, and I wouldn't really use it, but I actually went on a website that shows you um, how, how much uh, refresh rate makes a difference, and turning on ultra low motion blur and turning it off does actually make a big difference, but I don't think this is a feature that you're probably going to use that much especially because it is at the cost of brightness and at the cost of G-Sync as well, because you have to turn that off. But I think that is pretty much all the features about the monitor. Um, if you want to enable G-Sync, it comes up with a little balloon as soon as you actually plug this monitor in and fire it up. And then you just need to simply set your Manage 3D settings to G-Sync and click Enable G-Sync and you are away and ready to go. But before you get gaming, you'll probably want to actually calibrate this monitor. And if you want to do that, then the menus are pretty easy to navigate. The buttons are touchscreen and they have no sort of tactile feedback at all. And the only way you know if you've touched it is if there's something on the screen that actually changes. And I'm not a fan of this, I'd much rather see solid buttons or at least get some sort of beep or something to show that you've pressed the buttons. But that said, it's not been that difficult to navigate and the menus are actually laid out very well. The UI is clear and the only real issue I have is that if you enable SRG mo SRGB mode in the color settings, the brightening is stuck on max for some reason, and I've no idea why that is, but it was the same with my other Philips monitor, and that is just a missed opportunity, really. But in the menu point of view, not really too much to complain about, just wish they'd use buttons. So then, what about the star of the show? Gaming performance from a gaming monitor. What is the gaming experience like? Well, let me say this is probably one of the best gaming experiences I've ever had with a computer monitor. Everything about it is geared towards gaming, so I guess that is what you would expect. Now, the refresh rate is super high, which means everything is super smooth if you can run it at that frame rate. But if you can't, if you're running something, say, like Crisis 3 at max settings, then the experience isn't going to be as smooth as if you're running at a higher frame rate. But you don't get any of that judder or tearing associated with if you run a non-G-Sync monitor at that frame rate. Anything from about 40 FPS upwards is pretty smooth, and I don't think anyone would have a problem playing it. Like I say, it's not a substitution for a higher frame rate, but G-Sync makes it possible to be playing at that frame rate without any artifacts or any stutter. Now, if you do have a powerful graphics card and you want to be playing a game at a really high frame rate, then this monitor pretty much offers an experience like no other, at least no other high refresh rate G-Sync monitor. Battlefield 4 was hovering between 100 and 120 frames a second, and everything was just butter smooth. I can't imagine anything being smoother than that. It's just, it was a real pleasure to play. And if you want to be moving about quickly, if there's an explosion, G-Sync means that if you get a sudden drop in frame rate, at least a reasonable one that isn't too big, then yes, you're not actually going to notice it at all and you don't get any stuttering associated with V-Sync or anything like that. And I haven't seen a single screen tear since using this monitor. I have to say I've never had a better experience playing Battlefield 4 than I have with this monitor, which is a great sign. Now, I have said that it's not going to save you from any serious dips, and if you go into a game like Mass Effect 2, uh, that game was never designed to run over 60 frames a second, but you can unlock it with a special config hack. And if you do this, then the engine shows signs that it wasn't supposed to do that, and it drops from about 120 frames a second to around 38 in certain areas, and that shows you that where G-Sync just won't help you. You're getting a big drop, and it's not going to save you. But I don't think anyone ever said it would do because that's not really what it's designed to do. It's designed to stop tearing and minor stutters from G-Sync, from G-Sync, from V-Sync related issues. And it does that well. So don't expect it to do things that no, no technology will really be able to save you for. If you're going to get a big drop, it's not going to help you. So then this is an absolutely brilliant gaming monitor. It offers super smooth experiences at 1080p on a 27 inch panel. The problem there is that it is a 27 inch panel and it is only 1080p. 
so the resolution is a bit lower than some of the rivals, but the rivals are significantly more expensive. But then again, this thing is still quite expensive. It is over the £400 mark, at least at the time of filming, which means that you can, for this sort of price, get a 1440p 60Hz IPS in the same size. And while that is going to suit some people more, if you want to be gaming at 1080p on a 27-inch panel, this is definitely the way to do it. I wholeheartedly recommend this monitor, as long as you don't need that colour-critical colour reproduction. And so then that brings me to the conclusion. If you're looking at this monitor and you know that you want a 27-inch 1080p gaming monitor and you have an NVIDIA graphics card, then this is definitely a solid choice for you and I think you'd be very happy with the monitor because the build quality is good, the image quality is certainly good enough for gaming, and it's a really super smooth experience. For image quality professionals who maybe want a higher resolution panel with great image reproduction, then no, this isn't for you, but it was never designed to be. This is a gamer's monitor, and if you're gonna use it as a gaming monitor and not do too much else with it, then this is a monitor I can wholeheartedly recommend. The only real problem starts if you do a lot of different things with your monitor. If you maybe do gaming, you maybe do image quality work, and just a few different things, then that's the sort of thing when you're probably gonna need multiple monitors. And if you were looking to get a gaming monitor, then this is still one I would recommend. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, do give it a like. If you didn't like it, then obviously give it a dislike, but do let me know why you didn't like it. And for any questions, the best place is Twitter. It's at PCCentric. You can follow me on Facebook, find PCCentric, or on Snapchat, and it's PCCentric again. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you thought this video was good and you want to see more videos like this, then do subscribe and you'll get more videos like this every Sunday and every Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.